Linear algebra is a fantastic area of mathematics that allows us to simplify systems of equations into single lines of math. This simplification leads to better organization with matrices and vectors. And with this better organization, we gain the ability to study these systems in ways that we couldn't without linear algebra. One of the largest benefits that this better organization and simplification leads to though is our ability to easily implement and study these systems in modern computer code. This ability for us to use modern computers allows us much more efficiency and ease of studying these linear systems. Howdy folks, my name is Nick and welcome to the first episode of Computational Linear Algebra where we're going to discuss the linear system. Very quickly, before we get started, I want to quickly say that my goal with this new series is not to teach you linear algebra. In fact, I hope you have a very basic understanding of linear algebra and matrix operations. Basically, could you perform this AX equals B and understand why these dimensions work and these dimensions don't make any sense? Have you heard of eigenvalues and eigenvectors before? Then great, you should be ready to go. The whole point of this series is to help you understand higher level linear algebra through the use of modern computation. Most of you are probably going to be learning linear algebra so that you can take what you learn here and apply it to computer science, data science, or engineering type applications. And my goal is not just to teach you those ideas, but to show you how those ideas can be implemented in real world work. My background comes in astronomy and astrophysics. And many of the topics that we talk about, I use regularly in performing my own research. That being said, let's get started. Here we can consider a system of two equations with two unknowns. We can simplify that down into a form of AX equals B, where A is a two by two matrix, X is a two dimensional vector, and B is the resulting uh, vector. Now this should look very familiar and very simple, but how would we actually go about solving it? Well, again, that might seem very simple and very straightforward. We can use a process called Gaussian elimination in this specific case to take negative two times row two and add it to row one, which will give us negative five x two equals zero. So therefore we found that x two is equal to zero. We can plug that back in and then we can see that our x vector or our solution to this system is the vector 5, 0. That might seem very simple and very straightforward, but now imagine that we are scaling the system up to, let's say, 5 equations with 5 unknowns, 10 equations with 10 unknowns. Actually, let's take a look at an example of 10 equations with 10 unknowns. Let's say that we have a system with 10 equations with 10 unknowns. That would lead us to have an A matrix that is 10 by 10 in size. And ideally, that's not something that you would want to solve by hand. We could solve it by hand, but we don't want to. Well, very conveniently, we can write some computer code that is going to solve that for us. Here you're seeing both Octave and Python code for our first example. In both of these cases, these scripts are generating a random 10 by 10 A matrix with values between 0 and 100. Additionally, we're generating a B vector with all 0 entries except for the 6th entry being equal to 3. You can see here in lines 16 in the Octave code, and line 22 of the Python code, we are solving for this system. You can see that when we run the octave code, we generate a random 10 by 10 A matrix. You can see our B vector looks like this, all zeros except for the value 3 in the sixth position, and it solves for an X vector. You can see that this also happened in less than a millisecond which is incredibly fast. The Python code actually does an additional step where it is checking that AX in fact actually equals B. 
So in line 22, when we solve for x, we're storing that value, performing the operation ax, and outputting that to make sure that, in fact, it actually equals b. We can run that code, and you can see again, an A matrix is generated. Our B vector looks exactly how it should. We are solving that system, and we get an X vector out. And then you can see here our check. You can see that the sixth value is, in fact, 3. Although, a lot of these different values are non-zero. They're on order of 10 to the negative 16. Ultimately, we can approximate these to be zero since they're such small values, and we can associate that to computer error. We'll talk about that in future videos. But for now, since we can approximate all of these as zero, we can verify that this result is actually correct. Both of these scripts will be available on my GitHub and GitLab pages, and I'll encourage you to pull them or download them and begin running them and messing with them. I've chosen to use both Octave and Python because I know many people use MATLAB, but MATLAB costs money, and Octave is a really, really good alternative. You can see that the Octave code is actually much simpler than the Python code, but for most of my research work and most of the people who I know do research work outside of the areas of just pure applied mathematics, they're using Python. I'll, again, I'll encourage you to pull this code, mess with this code, try changing up the B vector and seeing how this actually runs. But as I stated, a 10 by 10 system is something that you could solve by hand. It would take a while, it wouldn't be very fun, but it's something that could be done. But what happens when we all of a sudden have a much bigger system? Let's say 1,000 equations with 1,000 unknowns. Linear algebra comes in really handy because we can simplify that down to just, again, one simple line of math of AX equals B. And additionally, that is not something that you're going to want to solve by hand. It would probably take days. Luckily, again, we can code that up pretty easily. And we'll do that in this next example. Here, again, we have Octave and Python code that is, again, on my GitHub and GitLab pages. And I'll encourage you, again, to Go and pull those or download those and begin to mess with the examples. In this case, we're generating a 1,000 by 1,000 A matrix with values between 0 and 1 million. We're generating a B vector with all zeros except for the value 12 in the 69th position. This is representative of a 1,000 by 1,000 system. Again, in line 17 of the Octave code and line 15 of the Python code, we're solving this system. We're not just solving this system, but we're timing this system. And instead of outputting large vectors and matrices to the terminal window, we're just checking that the product of A and X, after we solve for X, gives us the value 12 in the 69th position of the B vector. Running the octave code, we can see that we actually, in fact, get the value 12 in the 69th position. Additionally, this ran in 0.14 seconds, which is incredibly faster than if you were to try to do this by hand. Now, you might be wanting to solve a very specific system, and I would be willing to wager that entering in the matrix would actually take a shorter amount of time than trying to solve this by hand. Additionally, we can run the same example in Python, and you can see that that ran in an even faster amount of time, 25 milliseconds. And this is the real benefit that modern computer programming languages provide. Ultimately, I hope you've seen two things. One, that linear algebra is incredibly useful at simplifying and better organizing large systems of equations. Two, I hope you've seen that modern computers paired with modern computer programs are actually fairly easy to code up when we pair it with linear algebra. And by doing so, we can very quickly and very easily begin studying these systems. If all of this seems really basic and straightforward to you, it should. 
This is just the first episode, and I plan on going more in-depth with future videos. For next time, I want you to think about, is there a specific arrangement of an A matrix that would actually allow us to solve for our X vector faster? Is there a way that we could more easily solve for that X vector? And we'll talk about that next time. I want to thank you very much for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll do my best to try to answer your question as best as I can. Additionally, if you like this series, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. I want to thank you again very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.